Hello and welcome, my name is Ryan, I'm also known as RM2K Dev. Welcome back to this video. This is a devlog for the RPG CK, which is my RPG engine which I've been working on on Twitch.tv. So that stands for RPG Creation Kit. Now, I'll go ahead and show you some of the new features that we've added. I've been working on this now for about two weeks on and off after work. Um, we've been live streaming it on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash RM2K Dev, if you're interested in coming along to join us and having a look at uh, how things are going. But as I showed you with the last video, we had this menu system created, um, and it's completely resolution independent, which is really nice, so it doesn't matter what screen resolution you're using, which is fantastic, because if you're running this on a phone, uh, it's going to just work. So I'll just start a new game. Now we've also got um, a whole bunch of new stuff has been added, obviously. We now have... Um, items so we've, we can register an item into the item dictionary the items can be placed on the map and currently we do have inventory but there's no way to see it yet but you can pick these items up by simply walking into them uh, items have flags which allow them to be uh, stackable or not stackable which determines how they get added to your inventory so i'm still working on displaying that we've got a couple of touch controls here so you can actually click on these and i'll show you the menu in a second that works fantastically the dialogue system let me just minimize the screen a little bit if i speak with this you'll see our dialogue system displays um, and we have multiple dialogue and it also scrolls so if the window is really small like you're playing on a phone uh, it should automatically scroll down, which is probably a bit hard to see, but um, because of the debug stuff on the side there. But so that's working awesomely as well. Um, pretty much everything is just going really well. So I'll show you what that inventory looks like as well. I'll just put a uh, run this in debug mode so that we can we can go into the stack. Oh, sorry, the the lists and make sure everything is good. So it's just un debug some of these and step through this. And I'll also show you what the game looks like running on my phone as well. So what I'll do is I'll come in here, I'll pick up a couple of items, just step through that. Uh, so these bones, these are non-stackable. So if I pick up three of these, we should get three bones. And the potions are stackable, so I'm just going to pick up three of those as well. So we should have four things in our inventory. There we go. So let's pick up one more item to force the breakpoints, and let's have a look. So we've got a global, which is the RPG CK inventory. Let's, uh, that is a DS map. So that's a DS list, um, and the list contains DS maps. Now these DS maps are the individual items which come from the RPG CK items um, object, which is a dictionary. Sorry, a map. <laughs> I keep getting that wrong. Uh, uh, map. There we go. So you can see we've registered small HP potion, large HP potion, and bone into the into the array. Um, and then our inventory should contain references to those. So if we open the first one up, we have a bone. It's not stackable. We have another bone. It's not stackable. We have another bone. It's not stackable. That in, that's indicative of the three bones that we picked up. And finally, we should have one large HP potion, which has a stackable flag set to one, increase HP set to 50, and a count of four, which means that those items stacked in our inventory. So we've got stackable inventory, um, which is fantastic. It means everything's working really well on that side of things. Um, as far as how the system works, I'll show you a little bit of sample code. If we have a look at these items, so I've got some item declarations here. This is the potions that we just picked up. And the way that this works is simply by creating a list of item properties. Uh, it must be called item properties because it is used throughout the system. Then um, you, you add properties to, to that dictionary. Oh, sorry, I keep calling it a dictionary. Sorry, guys, I'm used to C Sharp. But you add, you add properties to this list this map so some of the properties that i've added here are name increase hp and stackable um which determines which which basically defines what the item is is able to do and then all you need to do to register the item is call rpg ck item register now this registers the item into the global items dictionary and then it's simply a matter of placing an instance of that item onto the room so you just have a room like the one that i've got here and the items exist on there collision events happen um and i'll show you the collision event with the player so if I go into my hero object, hero parent, you'll see, sorry, just the hero. Um, you'll see when the hero collides with any item, so anything that parents to item base, it just adds that item to the inventory. And that calls a script, which in the background does some magic to add that into the inventory. I'll show you those scripts now really quick. I've got a lot of scripts. We've got this debug system. We've got switches, variables, dialogue systems, UI systems. We've got some extension methods. We've got items and inventory and heaps of scripts. But um, add item basically goes through and works out how to add the item to your inventory and then adds it. So it's quite 
quite complicated scripts in here at the moment, but for the end user, it's extremely simple. Uh, so that was the item system. Uh, the in-game menu, we also have a new in-game menu, so you can actually uh, do stuff if you press the B button. Currently, none of the none of the menu items are implemented, but if I press the B button, which is on my keyboard X and on touchscreen B, you'll see that we have this item, uh, this inventory, which registers itself. And you can use the up and down keys to go through this. You can also use the mouse and drag to select menu items, which is pretty cool as well. And you can also click to um, select an item. So I should say selected menu item spells. Now, the first click selects it. The second click touches it. That is because of the touch side of things for mobile. So you can use the up and down keys and then use the A button to select something. None of these are implemented yet, but you'll see they are firing in the debug here, which is fantastic. Or you can select once with the mouse and then click again to confirm which is the other way of doing it, and that is because of the touch side of things. So, as far as touch goes, I will show you how this works on Android on a mobile. Um, so I have my phone here. I will make a jump cut to uh, from, from this project to the phone project once this finishes compiling, and um, I'll see you guys on the other side. So let's have a look at what this looks like on a mobile. Okay, so we're back inside of the Game Maker IDE. I'll show you how some of those events worked. Um, so for instance, the if we go to our map and then our events, you'll see we have some objects. Now I've got the first two signs and the floor trap. So I'll show you how the signs work. First thing that happens is our create event. We have inherit parent functionality and also initialize the object. The inherit parent functionality is because we have logic that needs to be performed in our base object which is you know, some of these basic events here, but these specify what sort of event it is, whether or not the event is uh, enabled, and whether or not the object should be solid or um, things like that. You as a user don't have to worry about any of this, and I'll show you what you do to create an object. So to create these signs, all you need to do is initialize the object, um, which you do with using uh, some, some test variables, which I've got here. So for instance, name epic sign, can set some variables up for the RPGCK system. These variables will be saved and loaded with the save system. So once I've implemented that, you won't have to worry about save games and save states. They will just work. As long as your variables are being stored inside of our variable system, they will save and load. Um, you can perform basic, you know, play a name, sign test, all this sort of stuff. You can also do basic mathematics by, you know, uh, grabbing a variable and then so setting a variable to the result of itself plus one. Um, then you can also do this sort of stuff here with like string interpolation, which is basically, uh, I'm basically saying play a name, which goes and it reads the variables when it displays the dialogue and it shows you RM2K dev in place of that. Um, so a simple example of this would be something like, um, if I were to just copy one of these and change the name of this to YouTube, and then I put something in here like W www.youtube.com forward slash rm2k dev. Then I could add another dialogue message event simply by doing this. There we go. Um, I'm just going to say in here, hello, uh, subscribe to me on, and then I can just say YouTube inside of handlebars like this. It needs to be capital, sorry, YouTube. So what will happen is when this event is displayed uh, or this event is passed, it will go and find YouTube from the variables, pull out this uh, information and then display that in your text, which you can use in your games to keep track of things, you know, like quests and um, item counters and encounters with other NPCs and things like that. So if I save that and just switch back to Windows and give that a quick run, you should be able to see that update on the screen 
and it will be really nice. Let's go speak with that sign. So I think that was sign one. So the first thing you see here is, hello, subscribe to me on www.youtube.com forward slash rm2kdev. And then it moves on to the other messages, which you can also skip through if you press the button fast enough. So you doesn't have to wait for it to display the whole message. You can skip through them, which is nice. Um, so that's how the event system works. Now, this event here is, it's not being defined as anything specifically. That is because it inherits from parent functionality. Parent functionality uh, basically states that the object by default is an action event, so you have to walk up to it and press the action button, which is A, or on the keyboard Z, or whatever is mapped in your game by the config, which will change later. But something like the floor trap, in its create event, it sets its trigger uh, sets its trigger to be the result of events.touch. Uh, so events.touch basically sets a flag inside the engine that says this event will only work when you touch it. Now, the way the event actually fires is the user event zero. So when you perform the condition of the event, be it um, the trigger, so the trigger is either action, which is you walk up to it and press the action button, or touch, which is where you touch the object, or action or touch, which is both. When the condition is met, the event system will call event user-defined event zero inside of the item object. Now, if we have a look at this one here, uh, this is the sign. What it says is RPGCK dialogue play my dialogue. Now my dialogue was set up in the create event um, as what we just defined before. So that's how that works. It's extremely simple. You could do any sort of logic in here that you like. You could, you know, um, for instance, what I'm doing is uh, toggling a toggling a uh, switch. So we've got switches like RPG Maker. The the toggle that I'm using is sign one test quest. Now if we look in sign one, sorry, sorry, sign two. I've got a name naming. Uh, issue there, but that's fine. If we look inside of sign 2's um, user event, you'll see that we enable the screen shake using our effects controller. We also read the switch uh, sign 1 test quest. If if that is enabled, it will say the quest is real. If it's not enabled, it'll say the quest is not real. So this is a way of using, you know, switches to do, to do some basic questing sort of stuff. You can set states in your game. Exactly the same as what you would do as if you were using RPG Maker. So I'll just go and speak with sign two first and you'll see it says the quest is not real I'll speak with sign one it'll say subscribe to me on YouTube and then you'll also see it says RPG CK switch on sign one test quest uh, I toggled that sorry I switched that off I need to turn that on there we go and if I speak with the sign two you'll see now it says the quest is not real so that's how the the questing system works um, Another feature which I just discovered, or didn't just discover, but just remembered to show you was like, we've got that screen shake there, which is quite cool, but we also have the fade in and fade out system with callbacks. So when I select new game, you see the screen fades out, the screen fades in into the map when it's done. So you can fade in and out into all your different, um, different systems. And yeah, it's coming along quite well. So if you have any questions, uh, please leave them in the comment section below. I would appreciate some feedback on the engine if you have any, you know, sort of concerns about something that I've done or you want to know more about something that I've done then let me know again in the comment section below otherwise please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to me here on YouTube and if you want to view these videos um, as I'm making them so when I'm making the system you can come and check this out live it's on twitch.tv forward slash rm2k dev where I'll be developing this almost every single day uh, 7 p.m. AWST time zone is usually about when I start streaming. So that's uh, GMT plus 8, UTC plus 8, um, also known as AWST time zone. Uh, and thank you for watching. I'll catch you in the next video. Bye for now.